but you want to take setups like coin. You see, I'm, you see, there's a really, really tight distribution of all the, of of all the carnage, right? You want to look at channels that are super, super. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another day, another adventure in what we call the best reality show that's not on television, uh, the wonderful world of the stock market. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So last night when I was recording the video, I was talking about, you know, what, what's going on on Facebook? How come it's getting killed? Obviously, uh, the news uh, after I logged off, uh, Snapchat, right? Snapchat, um, they guided lower, they pre-announced. And this is one of the things that uh, we were seeing, um, you know, we were seeing a lot of weakness, especially in retail. We've been seeing a lot of growth names uh, getting taken down one by one. We'll get, you know, we'll get to the individual pivots in a second. I want to show you guys some uh, setups for tomorrow. But more important is it's not that Snapchat took down the market. It's what Snapchat uh, represented. Anything with uh, ad spending, uh, customer acquisition, point and click, all that ad space, uh, this is what it represented. And it took down uh, as, as much as Snapchat got killed today, and it did. I mean, the stock, what, lost 40% or so? Uh, it, it took down everything with it. So it wasn't that Snapchat uh, killed the market. It's It was Snapchat what represented all of everything. We just always talk about it. Anything to do uh, with ad spending, right? They got hit. I mean, Google at one point uh, got down, you know, got down to what, 2037. Uh, you had Facebook, obviously, a really big exaggerated casualty. Uh, Twitter, right? Everything, anything in sight uh, that has anything to do with, which is basically everything. And, and again, it wasn't an excuse. It's just kind of what we are in right now. It's again, surprising if you don't know by now, we're in a bear market. And usually bear market comes out with bear market news. And, and again, we talked about a couple of days ago how aggressively the lack of spending in retail really showed uh, the, the consumer just, just refusing to give money out of their pockets because of just the cost of living is getting so expensive. So now it's just really trickling down to uh, to everything in sight. And again, if you look at the scoreboard, it's not that the Dow uh, that had the big losing day, the Dow was actually up 40 points, right? But again, it's the NASDAQ. You know, I, I don't care if the Dow you know trades up a thousand points. I don't trade Dow stocks. I trade the NASDAQ and NASDAQ uh, down almost another two and a half percent. Uh, down 270 points. And you start looking uh, on the queues. Again, what we discussed now for the last, whoa, Tesla, Tesla, oh, no, bad print. Never mind. Bad print in Tesla. <laughs> Never mind. That's a bad print. Just had to make sure, just because of yesterday, as of yesterday from uh, Facebook, I just had to make sure my, something's going on here. Some bad prints going off. But these are bad prints, I can guarantee you. Uh, Tesla is not up 60 points after the close. I just looked, and Microsoft is not down. 10 points, something's going on here. I don't know what it is, but something's going on. Uh, but anyway, uh, if you look at what we talked about uh, yesterday, right? Was actually a couple of days ago, where the potential soft landing, I, I still believe somewhere right here uh, around this 260 level eventually, right? Eventually will be uh, will be re represented. I think that, you know, that's where you start making a little bit of a shopping list uh, to kind of see where, you know, where you want to start looking at some long-term value. But until then, again, you're, you're going to have days that are up, right? You definitely have days that are up, but the overall trend continues to be down. And this is kind of what I talked about a couple of, couple of sessions ago. If you notice all the up days, right? For the exception of the Fed days, right? You can see exception of the two really big Fed days in the three-week rally. All the other days on this, especially in this last move below the 50-day moving average, you can see that the, 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 the green days are smaller, right? They're very contracting compared to the, the down days. This was a Fed day. This, this is an exception for that. And the, and the down days are exaggerated, right? They're expanding, 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 expanding. You could look how small yesterday's, like look how small uh, the other day's channel was to the upside. Look how big the, the candles are to the downside. So that's what you're seeing. And that's, that, that's the continued trend uh, until we start at least reclaiming some minor channels. Like at least we talked about this area here, this 295 level on the weekend update. At least if we start taking above this 295 level, then we can start making a conversation of, hey, what happens next? But until then, listen, again, is the market possible rallies tomorrow? Again, I don't care about any individual update. There's just no value. Even a name like Zoom that came out with some pretty good earnings today, you know, initially they took the stock down red right away. Last night, this thing was trading at 108. They took it red today. You know, it got rejected off the top of the range here. It went up a, you know, a couple of bucks or so, but it wasn't a big deal. And that's the whole point that they're not 
rewarding anything. And that's the whole point. They're selling everything. And if anything uh, comes up with a bid, it's, it's, it's a very, very small uh, in short bid, and that's kind of where we are uh, headed. Uh, just as, uh, as a somber note, I forgot to do this. Uh, it, it feels like I'm saying this like once or twice now uh, a month. Man, there was another school shooting. I don't know how many of you guys actually heard this. Somebody retweeted this out. Uh, in a Texas elementary school, 14 students, including one teacher, 14 little kids, man. Uh, and it looks like an 18-year-old came into the school, shot his grandmother first, a murdered 14 children uh, and one teacher. I mean, just just insane. The, the world we live in. So again, guys, always take a back, uh, take a back, and just say, look, I don't care how bad or good your day is, man. There's some crazy stuff happening in the world. Just be thankful your family's safe and uh, everything else kind of takes place. But kind of, I kind of just wanted to say a prayer uh, for all the, you know, again, senseless crime. It just feels like last week was Buffalo. Now this is just. Uh, the world is going to the hell in a handbasket uh, very, uh, very quickly. So, you know, let's talk about today. Uh, again, um, you know, Snapchat definitely helped, right? It definitely helped uh, put the fuel to the fire. Um, I was expecting, uh, I was expecting pretty much a very, you know, very muted day. Again, we're only a few days away from uh, people really taking off. I think by, not by, I think by Wednesday, you'll probably get that last bit of aggression at one way or another, and you'll start probably fading the last uh, Thursday and, and Friday into light volume. Um, so I expected kind of a, a very light volume kind of day today. And because of Snap, uh, really opened, uh, uh, you know, the trap door in a lot of names. And, you know, those if you look at pre-market, a lot of names that I even thought were, were really overextended as far as their gaps on their average true range just kept on going lower. And that was the kind of the point. So it really opened up everything under the sun. And when you look at uh, today's action, you know, you, you started seeing some pretty big moves. Obviously, you know, you can't trade everything. You can't see everything. And uh, the most important thing is just see what you can and just kind of watch for it to confirm. But, but you had some big moves here. So, you know, yesterday there was a big pivot on, on Amazon. Today it confirmed 2078 for builds below. You can see 2048. So it took out... Uh, it took out that 2078 and then it took out that 2048, uh, went all the way down to 2025. Obviously, this 2000 area uh, is going to be a big deal because I think eventually if it does confirm this 2000 area, look, look how much room you have uh, to the Bollinger Band. If it gets down here, you know, you're talking about 1878, 1900. It's going to be very, very weird uh, to, to view Amazon in, you know, in losing the two handle. So it was weird seeing lose the three handle, let alone uh, the two. So this thing has still has room down again, maybe has a bounce for a couple of days, but I still think this thing goes lower. Uh, at, you know, AMC, we talked about this, uh, for, you know, for the last couple of days, 1140 for builds below can flush. They finally started taking it down. That's the most important. They couldn't even save the market leader uh, from falling. Uh, so here was AMC. They finally took down this 1140, 1150 area. Closed pretty much at the lows at 1030. Uh, again, I, I think this thing is going to probably settle in on uh, the next couple of days around this 970, uh, 950 level. So, you know, nice. I think it's tomorrow below that uh, below today's channel should, should give a move to 970, 950. I think this, it, it extends uh, for another day. Uh, Square finally broke down. Uh, we've been talking about Square for a couple of days. Uh, 78, 88 held twice. If it builds below, it can flush. Here was Square. Right, so they finally took down the 78.88. Here's the 78.88 once, 78.88 twice. Yesterday's low was 79. It finally took out the 78.88, traded down to 74. We started seeing uh, 70 weeklies. I still like this thing going. I think if it confirms uh, today's price action tomorrow below that 74, I, I think this thing has a shot at 70, uh, even 67 on the bottom Bollinger Band. They came for the 70 weeklies and the 60s for June. So there's a you know, pretty good betting uh, considering uh, the lack of institutional participation. Uh, Tesla, you know, came down. Again, they, they're still betting. Uh, they're still betting on uh, the 600s. We're starting to see uh, 600 weeklies, 590 weeklies. Uh, you know, again, this thing's going lower. You know, it's not really, uh, it's not really, you know, it's not Teflon anymore. It's going to go down like everything else. So it finally took down uh, the, the low from 633 traded down to 620. Look, I think this thing confirms 620 tomorrow. You're going to see 607, 600. So institutional money flow is heavy on the bot, on, on the on the sell side. On on Tesla, Zoom, you know, only went up a buck, went up to 97. Nothing really to talk about here. UPST uh, got hit as well. 40 if it builds below can flush more. Here was UPST. 
right? Took down that 40, uh, went all the way down to 35. Again, look how much room it still has down uh, over the longer course of a, an extended uh, bear scenario. Here's 37. Uh, coin, uh, 60, 50 for bulls below can flush. Yeah, nice little move on coin. Nothing huge, but nice little move on coin. Uh, went down to like 59 and change. So, uh, you know, I think below 59, this thing starts uh, getting spread down. Uh, MSTR, not a big move. Very, very thin stock. Uh, only went down to like 85, 86 before it reversed. Uh, here are 77, then 74s, then 59 on deck. Uh, and that is about it. So look, you, you have kind of the same dynamics. The most important thing uh, for this bear scenario is don't, try not to take anything overextended, right? There's, there's a lot of names uh, that look really terrible, but you want to try to like, like the, the, even though like coin didn't collapse, but you want to take setups like coin. You see, I'm, you see this a really, really tight distribution of all the, of, of all the carnage, right? You want to look at channels that are super, super condensed. So if it does fail, you could catch it right away. If something is down, you know, six, seven, eight, nine days in a row, there's a high probability to reverse So if you look at all the setups from today, most of them, right? They were very, very tight. Like if you look at coin, very, very tight. If you look at uh, UPST, uh, when it broke down a couple of days ago, it was super duper tight. Uh, off this channel. Um, so if you look at some names that I like for tomorrow, let me give you guys a couple of names that uh, that look pretty good here. Um, oh, look at look at Airbnb. Um, look at Airbnb. Airbnb broke down today. Uh, broke down today. Put in a low. They were coming for the weekly uh, 100 puts. I want to keep an eye on this thing below tomorrow uh, today's channel. Uh, that looks ready to go. Roku got hit pretty hard today. And it stopped right on the bottom channel here. You can see they're just defending this bottom channel here. If it could lose this bottom channel, you're going to see more selling coming across. Uh, look at NET, another name that, look at this thing. This thing is ready to go. Look how tight this channel is, right? You know, I understand the stock's gone killed, but you have two and a half, three weeks of data here. If this thing starts building below this channel here, this thing has a lot of room down. So keep an eye on that. Uh, Boeing, I like this continuation move on Boeing. Uh, last week it broke the 20, traded down to 17. If it starts losing 17, I think it sees uh, 110. So that's it. That's It's the same pretty much game plan. Uh, if we do rally tomorrow, I just don't care. I, I really don't. I, I'm pretty much, I sit on all the sidelines and the, the rallies don't do anything, right? It's like literally, it's like trying to squeeze water out of a rock for, 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 for the downside, for every downside move that you're getting three, four, five dollars. It's like squeezing 50 cents out of the long side. It takes up so much mental equity and you know you're trading into supply. So one down tick, bids scatter like cockroaches. So that's, the, you know, that's kind of the discipline, right? That really is the discipline until these stocks start reclaiming higher levels. Um, and right now, again, is it possible they can? Sure, it's, I think it's possible. But the point is there's so much downward value that even if you have a green scoreboard, like, like yesterday, we had a green scoreboard and it was a pretty solid move on Amazon to the downside and Tesla to the downside. And there's a lot of charts out there. There's, there's, there's so many, you know, Shopify looks like death. I mean, there's so many charts that look terrible. Look at Splunk. You know, you just got to pick the one that you want to trade. Look at Splunk. Splunk looks like he wants to challenge uh, this 84.63 level. There's just a lot of value here. Just the most important one is take the ones that you feel comfortable trading. Look at even a smaller price name like Lucid, right? Look at Lucid. Look how tight this channel is. Lucid, to Lucid tomorrow loses 16.86, right? You have a lot of room down. So the key is take what you feel like comfortable in trading. Let trust technical analysis and hopefully the volume and the liquidity and the spread is tight enough that you get some really good institutional money flow, some option flow, and you have your desired outcome. Guys, have a great night. God bless. Again, stay safe, everybody. And with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.